Hello and welcome to the new High Tech Oil Super Series. It's round number one that starts at Winton Motor Raceway, two hours north of Melbourne in Victoria. It is sunny and warm here, but the racing is super close. Headlined by the TA2 Muscle Cars. It's great to see the Mustangs, Camaros and Dodgers out on track. They look so ominous as they go around here at Winton Motor Raceway. And they're going to put on some fantastic racing throughout this 2023 season. And let's have a look at the calendar. We kick it off here at Winton Motor Raceway before heading to Hidden Valley Raceway up in Darwin. Then it's to Queensland Raceway. When we go a little bit further west in the Morgan Park Raceway in Queensland, then to Sydney Motorsport Park before we head down to the historic Calder Park to finish the season off. Well, we're not far away from hearing the rumble of the TA2 muscle cars. Wade, this race is going to be super exciting. Time to shake, rattle and roll here from Winton Motor Raceway near Benalla in Victoria. There was trouble earlier today. Here's the Pat Gartner accident. Coming through turn number two, something broke in the car. Keep your eye in the center of the screen and then bam, it was a hard hit. And that MVA team did a phenomenal job. They burnt the midnight oil to get the car repaired and back on track. That's what it looked like. And they dragged it underneath the big rubber tire Duna and that Castrex car was back out. Graham Cheney getting together with Zach LeChalpo. And he came back on the track, which gave Nicholas Bates something to think about. LeChalpo actually got a 10-second penalty for all that. And Cheney ended up with an air intake full of grass, which overheated the car. And he ended up languishing back in, like, 21st position. There was an incident right here as well. Chris Pappas was given a penalty for turning the 49 of Chris Formosa. Pappas was a busy man throughout this race, in fact got into a bit of trouble over here. The eight car, which caused Mick Rowell and also Peter Robinson some consternation. And that certainly helped hurt Robinson's overall end results. He's always one of the front runners is the series founder and series boss. Now this is Nick Lang, who came up behind the 30 car and got himself in all sorts of bother, jammed on the brakes in the Tefal 44 got back out on track, but it certainly cost him an absolute ton of ground. So it was busy, unfortunately, for Keem. The smash repairer from Gunnada having some more trouble with the De Beer refinishing entry. And Mick Rowell recovering from a shoulder reconstruction in that 15 car. Also not without his share of dramas Gorgeous looking car, the Rail Logistics entry. But how about Lee Stibbs? The expat Englishman living in South Australia now scored his first ever TA2 Muscle Car Series win. Congratulations to him. Jackson Rice shadowed him. It's Ned Kelly territory as we get set for the TA2 Muscle Cars. Stibbs on the pole after his career first. TA2 Muscle Car Series win. Did a great job. Jackson Rice will line up alongside him. You'll have Nicholas Bates and Dylan Thomas. We'll then go back to Aidan Jackson, who's doing an excellent job out of Maitland in New South Wales. Zach LeChalpo. We'll then go back to Michael Coulter alongside Hugh McAllister. You've got Josh Haynes, who came from 25th to 9th. You then go back to Hayden Hume, he'll line up out of position number 10. John Hollinger in the 23 car out of 11 from 12. It's Mark Crutcher in the 4 car. Matt McKeldon will line up out of 13 in the 99. Alongside him, it's Dean Limston out of South Australia in the 30 car. Adam Hargraves lines up in the 15th spot in car 20. Aaron Tebb from 16 in the 93 car. Nick Lang lines up out of 17 in the 44. Alongside the 50 of Paul Hadley out of position 18. Christopher Formosa will line up out of 19 in the 49 car. And from 20, it's Chris Pappas in the 8. Peter Robinson lines up out of 21 in the 10 car. Bernie Walsh in the 52 will line from 22. Mick Rowell from position 23 will line up in the 15 car. Rob Leonard from 24th in the 40. Now keep your eye on the back here. Graham Cheney in the 51 car will line up from 25. Greg Keem from 26 in the 13 and Brad Gartner. Expect the bespectacled bullet from Panola, South Australia to really make a charge forward. Safety car ducking off the racetrack. It's the High Tech Oil Super Series 
Round one, race three of the TA2 muscle cars, framed by high-tech steel framing. Look at this, a rolling start. Haynes will be extremely quick off that fifth row. Waiting for that red light to go out, and we are green here at Winton. Stamps will be desperate to nail that inside line. Oh, someone. Oh, we got trouble already. And a car upside down. Big crash. I think it might have been one of the IES cars. We'll wait for the dust and the smoke to settle. And it is. Wow, it's the 50 car of Hadley. My goodness me. Paul Hadley, he's kicked the door open already, which is the good news. The once immaculate IES entry of Paul Hadley. Crash grew quickly over to check on him. He kicked the door open early. Always a good sign there when we see the driver try to get out of the car there. And Raul in the background has pulled off to the infield as well. Saw Pappas involved in that one early on and coming back on track on our screen earlier there. You can see him dragging a lot of that rocks and debris back onto the track, but something's obviously made contact there. They were going four wide at some point yeah. throughout that start. It's a real bottleneck into turn number one, isn't it, Wade, where there's no room for two of these cars. They're a wide car. They're trying to get through. There's lots of noise, those big, loud, thumping exhausts, and unfortunately, that is going to end. Look how weekend. dusty Paul is right there, just from the dust inside the car when he rolled. That's the good news. He's OK. The main man of that IES motorsport team out of the Illawarra. He used to race Formula Extreme motorcycles back in the day. And he actually had a bit of a motorcycle career ending crash at this very raceway many years ago that forced him to look into other forms of motorsport. And boy, that was just a big unload for a gorgeous hot rod. OK. Not sure whether an official has kicked that over. It's still the remnants of what happened before. But Matty Kavanagh, good to have you for the series. It's going to be truly remarkable. I fancy it won't be as spectacular as that, and I certainly hope that it won't be. So there is the medical car, and Paul Hadley inside that right now. Good news is he got in there himself. That's the best news. Well, let's try and have a look at what happened right there in the high-tech oils. Super Series replay. It was ugly, as Matt said, on this start. There were three wide in places. Look to the back of the screen, to the left-hand side. This is where we might see someone went off the track initially. The white car just there. Oh, Pappas! So it was the eight car of Pappas that just got into the side of Hadley. So he came through the middle and clipped the right side of Paul Hadley. They were all trying to make a position there, wasn't he? Pappas had a really good start there and the wow. momentum will check it out. Right hand side of screen. You say one car already off, a lot of dust coming up. Pappas comes through and it's just that left rear where he clips the car and once it goes off there, it's. Found a bit of a rut there once the car's up on two wheels. It's just had enough momentum there to force the car to roll over. Pappas off of turn number one. Luckily, he didn't make contact with any other car by the looks of that as well. So that could have been a lot worse than what we did see out there on track. I think that um, Hadley started to roll when he hit the access road. There was actually a road, a dirt road across from the track. And I think he was already sideways and sort of spinning across there. And it might have been actually when he tagged the access road. We'll see if we get a different look at it. It's a great start from Stibbs and also Rice. And it's back to the right here where this all starts. And it's difficult to see through that. You just, I don't know, Matt, it's a it's a 12 lap race. It's a bottleneck corner and you want to go three wide through the middle. I'm just not convinced that that was even remotely on the cards. So I just, let's have a look at it here. Where's he going to go? Yes, oh. He's really tried to come between two cars there, hasn't he? And got squeezed out, Pappas. He said, he's just gone to the right and made contact there with Hadley. Probably not the opportunistic moment, especially when you've already done about 150 metres down the racetrack. It's only 250 metres from the start line to that first corner as well. Stephen White is standing down the pit lane. Boy, Steve, not the start we wanted, mate. Unbelievable here. We've got Chris Pappas with me. Chris, what happened from your position? I just said when going to turn one, someone's come onto my tyre and blew a tyre and obviously I couldn't turn off I've gone, so. 
worries, Chris. Back to racing, back to racing, guys. Up back to you. So we're back underway with Lee Stibbs getting after it now. And Jackson Rice in that second spot. Bates in third. We then go back to Thomas. Now looking at Coulter. Firing up the inside, the Cabelco Camaro. Makes a stick. You just saw the Shelbo go wide. So it's been a frantic opening lap here at Winton Motor Raceway. A safety car situation with Paul Hadley rolling over. Fortunately, he's A-OK. -okay. Wow, Matty Cab, what a way to start the first round and our live coverage today. Yeah, Lee Stibbs has lead, lead it away nicely there, led away over uh, Jackson Rice, who's now trying to apply some pressure in the background. It's going to be a nice little battle for third position with Nick Bates and Dylan Thomas there. And another one that's got through on Le Sharpo as he went out wide earlier, it looks like as uh, Colt has gone, uh, sorry, we've had um, Hayden Jackson go through as well, as you can see in the back of the screen there. So he's followed Colt through into that sixth position. And I'm just having a look, Le Sharpo's dropped back another two positions as well. Just watching that battle there with Haynes. You can also see Lindstrom there with Crutcher. So Dylan Thomas, very consistent as usual. Here's a good battle right now, Hayden Jackson. Then you've got Josh Haynes and now Hume. This kid out of Brisbane South is really starting to crank it up. Doing a good job, Steve, just wriggling a little bit under load. Now Rice has put the qualifying tyres back on. Oh, it's a problem here for Crutcher. He's slowing dramatically in the crutcher developments. Number four gets himself out of the way. Good sportsmanship from Crutcher. Oh, look at this. Jackson Rice closing in on your race leader. You can see third and fourth up on your screen now. Head back a bit further down the pack. And of course, that's the number 52 car there. Bernard Walsh. Gee, Rice is really coming on. This has been a really solid drive. They've changed those tyres from qualifying. Haynes there, he's got lots of pressure. From Hume, he's doing an excellent job. Dylan Thomas now in the very clean number 24 of Nicholas Bates. Now there is trouble for Keem again. The De Beer refinishing number 13 car out of Gunnedah. So he rejoins the racetrack. On debut, it's been a really tough debut for this family team out of Gunnar. Change up for the lead right now. Jackson Rice gets the move done as they head down to turn number 11. Back onto the main straight to complete lap number four. And he's now got the lead over Lee Stibbs, who has to go back into second place. They've changed position, of course, we saw in race number one. Jackson Rice take the win. It was a fantastic top 10 shootout yesterday where he came from fourth in the initial qualifying session to then win the top 10 shootout and take out race number one. Lee Stibbs, though, got Ooh. that back in race two. And in now, the fight's going to be on here. Stibbs is coming right back. He needs to be a little careful here. Bates under enormous pressure from Thomas. That battle raged for most of the earlier race today. The very clean 24 is actually his son Sam's cleaning business out of Canberra. So Rice, Stibbs, Bates and Thomas. Dylan closing in on Bates as they work their way out of the cleavage. Looks like Haynes has made a move into fifth position now. He's managed to get past Coulter as well. He's trying to push on. We saw that big one in race number two where he did a number of positions there. And Thomas tries to go around the outside on Bates for a moment as they head back down now. They're heading into turn number 10, the sharp left-hander, and he's going to have to pull out of this one. Not going to get the move done. We see him trying to challenge through that cleaving section of the track. So Dylan Thomas is going to have to rethink his approach against Nicholas Bates. Oh, Bates is under pressure now from Thomas. He had a flirt with the idea of that inside pass, those big teeth nearly came out on the CXC Mustang. As we come back to the main straightaway, Bates and Thomas still going at it. We're working lap six of 12, race three, round one of the TA2 muscle car series, framed by high-tech steel frames. Thomas bearing down on Canberra's Nick Bates. Stib still holding on now. Let's talk about Brad Gardner for a second. They did an amazing job to repair the 22 and get it back out there. But there's more dramas. Let's go down to Stephen White. Thank you, 
you guys. I'm here with Mark Crutcher. We didn't want to see you this early. Mark, what's happened? No, not at all. I just lost all drive coming out onto the straight. Um, I think it might be an engine issue. Uh, we run pretty hot yesterday, so uh, pretty hot day. We stood still for a while. So, yeah, unfortunately, Mr. just more worried about Paul. I hope he's OK. I think he might have a role in the team, mate. Great guy, and I just, I just hope he's OK, is he? No problem. So they retrieved him, obviously, bringing him back to the medical centre. So the car was all right. He kicked the door open, so that's a good sign. So he'll be frustrated, but hopefully he's OK. Oh, you're the first world problem, so our, car, our race car broke. So no, no, look, it's great racing out there, great venue. It's just been a really well run event from my point of view. Just a pity we couldn't uh, help out a bit more there. No worries. Thanks, Mark. Now, just to quickly, guys, up top, uh, the Michael Rowe car actually wasn't involved in the incident, had a power steering issue. He just retired for the event. Josh Haynes is up to fifth place right now. The teenager from Canberra and the teenager from Brisbane. Now, Caden Hume only turned 18 on Wednesday. So remarkable how well he's adapting to this whole concept. Hasn't done a huge amount of racing in a V8 sense. In fact, none. So really cool to see him out of the 86 series. He ran cards before as well. There he is on screen going right by then. Doing a hell of a job. Coulter, then back to the Schalpo. Jackson just there as well. There is McKeldon. McAllister and Graham Cheney. Now Cheney has come from position 25. So Matt, he is really starting to get running as well after that incident earlier on where he had to cut across the infield, filled up the car's intake with all that dry grass and it overheated the car. So Jackson Rice continuing to hold sway. He's got a, almost a one second lead right now over Lee Stibbs. But this battle now, look at the third car in the shot. To the right-hand side, Josh Haynes. That beautiful green car is now coming into the windows there of Dylan Thomas. If you're looking at the side mirrors and thinking, no, I don't need a third person in this fight, Dylan Thomas is going to have to try and make a move on Bates as soon as possible because Josh Haynes on a hard charge after what was a tough Saturday race where they had some really hot conditions there and they had the oil temperature go up and thin out a little bit. They didn't want to risk it. They pulled in, so they didn't get any points in race number one. He had to work back from the back of the grid yesterday race today and he's got himself over position number nine already into fifth now in this race and look at him pulls out grabs some fresh air there i'm not surprised by that actually we're going to see a few of the cars do that this weekend we'll be back after this short break Rice still continuing to get away from Stibbs. The battle pack is right here. Bates, Thomas, and Haynes. You then go back to Hume. Then Coulter, Le Chalpo, Aaron Tebb, the big man in the 70, 93 car. Then go back to Jackson. Cheney has got into position 11. That's a big drive for Graham Cheney. Remember, he came out of position number 25. So he's really advancing. You see Pete Robertson at the top of the screen. That is Formosa. Bags up to General Lee, the Allgate, number 49, Dodge. And he'll get back on track right there, but it's been a tough start to him for the championship. So I haven't been in this car since last year. So just trying to get my head back in the game. Bates, Thomas, and now that teenager, Josh Haynes. Right behind the CXC Mustang now, Dylan Thomas. And what does Thomas do in this situation, Wade? Does he wait and try and make a move on Bates or again? Does he really need to hurry that up? Because he's gonna have to he's gonna have to worry about Haynes in the background who's charging on. Let's have a look at the high-tech all super series replay though. Yeah, Formos just gets in too hot, grabs a bit of break and turns it around. We were talking about Gardner earlier on. They repaired that car, they were up to 1.30 in the morning. When they took it out on track, it was actually locking up the front brakes and he was starting to burn up the clutch, trying to compensate for that as well. So they ended up pulling the car in the Mike Vito Automatics MVA team. So Brad hoping to charge. He's up to position 12 now. Now he came from position 27. He's looking for the hard charger award. There's every chance he could get that. So the Hypercoil Springs Hard Charge Award currently would be held by Josh Haynes. He went from 25th to 9th, Matt. Right now, Brad Gartner trying to pinch it off him. Well, he's what's out because he's following his mate Jenny through as well. Great Jenny, who also started just in front of him on the grid here for race number three of the TO2 Muscle Cars, framed by High Tech, still framing. Oh, Haynes. Haynes, he's going to have another look, isn't he? Applying the pressure there. Close 
closer and closer is the beach of Sea-Doo, number 37. In the background, too, is Hume doing a heck of a job, the 18-year-old. And, of course, Haynes in that same demographic. These kids are barely old enough to buy a beer at the pub. And here they are, absolutely going large at Winton. Le Chalpo in behind Coulter then. As we focus once again on his battle for third place, Bates Thomas Haynes. Hume, Coulter, Le Chalpo, Teb is in ninth. Genie to tenth. Hayden Jackson in eleventh. We rock down lap 10 of 12 here at Winton Motor Raceway. Can't no, quite get close enough, but they were three wide coming down the straight. Not quite sure if they're looking for a bit of fresh air under that car. Or you can see a bit of defensive driving there from Dylan Thomas. We head down to turn number three. We've seen a lot of brake locking up there, but they get through nice and smoothly Ooh, this time huge. round. Did he go in ultra deep just in that Total Parts Plus entry? Doing a good job to try and pull these guys in. If anything, Bates is getting away just a little bit, and that's reflected in how Thomas is having to be a bit defensive. We work the cleavage now with Jackson Rice from Wodonga. Just a stone throw down the road from Winton Motor Raceway. He had his colours lowered by Lee Stibbs in that earlier race, number two. He won race one. So he's looking to bounce back. The team told me we definitely have changed the tyres back from our qualifying tyres for this, and we're going to charge hard. Haynes coming after Thomas now. Patterson Rowell in the pit area, and Hadley, of course, unfortunately went upside down in that spectacular incident. I want to send a shout out to our driver standards officer, Jeff Leeds. Leeds, he can't be here with us this weekend, but Leeds, I just want to tell you that we're all behind you, mate. Get strong, be well, and we've all got your back, buddy. And let's hope we have you back soon. McKeldon with Lang and also with Hargraves in that battle pack there, Matty Cav. Yeah, McKeldon and the Kubota Mustang now gets on the brake as they head down. Into the turn, it looks like he's gonna hold on that one nicely, but this is the battle we're watching at the moment. Second position out in front, Bates. He's got Dylan Thomas right behind him. Josh Haynes then, and joining this is going to be Hayden Hume, the 18 year old, on the back of that. This is going to be exciting in the last couple of laps of this race. Gould is now just covering across the Sharpo there and making sure he can't get the move done as they head around turn number four. He's doing a good job, is Hayden Hume. Gould's are under a lot of pressure. They sold their Mustang to Keem and they've switched over to the Camaro. And they've got another one right behind them. This is Zach LeShalpo. Zach got a 10 second penalty for his part in that little rub in his racing deal earlier on with Graham Cheney in race number two. And so Kulza, whose dad, Steve, one of the legends of light truck racing back in the day, he used to do some of his best work around the iconic and now defunct Oran Park Raceway. And really stepped up the game in the last half of last season and now a strong start in the Cabelco number 11 for Michael Coulter. Rice, Stibbs, Bates, Thomas, Haynes, Hume, Coulter, LeShalpo, Teb and Cheney, your top 10. So Cheney has come from position 25 to 10th. Now where is Gartner? He's back in 12th. He came from 27th to 12th. So a couple of really big hypercoil springs, hard charger contenders there. As we're on the final lap now, Jackson Rice still leading this race in the header suspension. Number seven out in front, Lee Stibbs behind. They've got a little bit of a gap. This is the fight now for third position. Back there to Bates as they open up a bit of a gap on Dylan Thomas. Look up there, we've got another car going very slow on the left-hand side. They're pulled right over and we can see how much rubber on the edge of the track is starting to marble up out there. Well, wow, Jackson Rice has certainly settled the ship, hasn't he? A 2.6 second advantage, the dream racing Australia driver for pedal suspension and brakes. Having a little bit of fun out of the right-hander because, well, why not? Now, they've still got one race to go today on the same tyres. They've got a bounty of six tyres to start with on the Hoosiers. Going to be interesting to see who has what left. Did I just see Haynes making a big attack? No, it's Hume! Having an attack on Haynes, so man, he's really got that very nice looking dodge rolling. Check a flag about to come out for this guy, Jackson Rice. 126.08 was his best lap on lap number six. And he will dominate race number three of round one of the TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by high tech. Lee Stibbs, solid for second. Dylan Thomas, 
Now, will Haynes hold on just from Hume? This is Le Chalpo on Coulter. Zach pulls out of the draft. How about the run from Cheney? He nearly got temp. So that's a mighty drive from Graham Cheney. His teammate and team boss ended up upside down in the 50.05, 50.05 Camaro. Well, I'm sure that Paul will be A-OK, -okay, but what a drive from Cheney to try and avenge that result. They couldn't stop Jackson Rice, Matty Cav. No, they could not. He led really into the lap number two. He is already in front of Lee Stibbs after an exciting race number two where he got relegated back down there. And uh, look, he's got two race wins now from three races. It'll be a, a nice swag of points. Of course, this is his home track though yeah. down here at Winton Motor Raceway. So he knows it very, very well. I really love him coming out of that final corner and expressing himself there and sliding the car out. Let's have a look at how the results are now for race number three, the TO2 muscle car framed by High Tech Steel Framing. Jackson Rice got the win, of course, over Lee Stibbs in second place. Nick Bates held on for third. Dylan Thomas challenged early but couldn't get it done. Josh Haynes moved up another four positions in the fifth place, just holding out a hard-charging Hayden Hume. Aaron Tebb did a good job, too, in that ninth position. Tenth was Graham Cheney, a monster drive from him. Also, as we flip over the page, we'll see that Brad Gartner as well got himself up to position 11, did he, in the end? He did. So Gartner from 27th to 11th. Hayden Jackson, 12th. Matt McKeldon, 13th. Very consistent this weekend. Hello to his wife, Helen, who's tuned in. She dropped a weight on her foot in a gym up in Queensland. Had to go to hospital. Hope you're going OK, Helly. Nick Lang, 14th. Adam Hargraves, 15th. Peter Robinson, Dean Lindstrom, Bernie Walsh, John Hollinger, Chris Vermoso. We went back to Greg Keem, Robert Leonard, and then a tale of woe. I didn't catch what happened to Hugh McAllister. We know that Mark Crutcher had dramas. Not as much as, unfortunately, Paul Hadley in the IES number 50. Boy, there was a lot going on. Let's take a look now at your High Tech Oils highlights from Winton Motor Raceway. Great to have your company. It's been a very balmy day. Now, it started off in all sorts of fashion here. Poor old Hadley. I just wonder what on earth was going to possibly come good out of all that. And I think it's where he started when he actually went over the ripple strip or the access road. And that's when the car started to roll over. We look at it again from a different angle. Stibbs was actually the leader into that turn, but we were all watching the 50 car. They won the best presented team last year, or best presented car, the two cars. They pride themselves on presentation. And look at that, all climbing out of the car. That's the good news. Back at the restart, it was all Stibbs, but it was all Stibbs early because Jackson Rice had some big ambitions and the talent to back that up. I was watching two for Jackson. He was good early, and then he faded a bit towards the end of that race. So it'll be really interesting to see with Hayden Jackson. We've got Hayden Jackson, we've got Hayden Hume, we've got Jackson Rice. I'm going to screw this up all day, <laughs> We're Matty, going to get this wrong at some point. Here you see the overtaking done there. It was on turn number 11 there with Jackson Rice dove the inside of the Petters, number seven on the inside of Lee Stibbs and managed to hold on to it as they came back over the start finish line. Nice manoeuvre from him and one of the best overtaking areas for these cars. Now here's Chris Formosa. Just gets in a little hot and heavy in the Allgate, number 49. Amongst other things, him and his dad and his family have some remarkable movie cars. They have a Batmobile and they have a Scooby-Doo mystery machine and all sorts of cool cars. This was a great battle here with Michael Coulter and Zach LeShalpo. LeShalpo, the Southern Series winner. Now, this is the problem, I think, with McAllister. So Hugh had a problem just there. McKeldon got through. So too did Lang. And so I think Hugh was definitely battling some issues right there. But they could not lay a candle to the Wodonga Whiz Kid, Jackson Rice. He will take the win. And that's a great way because he set quick time. He had the PWR Pole Award and 500 bucks cash. He won race one, second in race two, and he won race three. Let's go down to Stephen White. Back with the winner here of uh, race three, Jackson Rice, the local boy. Well done. Yeah, no, thank you. No, it was, uh, it was a tough race. I mean, Lee really made me work for it, but um, I just can't thank the boys enough for the car. Like, they just they just do a fantastic job, and, and the team works great within the boys. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, really good. Happy. Chance you can back it up for race four? Oh, I mean, possibly. I mean, we've we got a fast race car, so, look, we'll just keep chipping away. I think it's anyone's game in the last one. I was just trying to conserve tyres there and sort of have a bit of forethought for the next one. But we'll see. I mean, these blokes are fast and they give us a hustle up, so we'll go from there. No worries. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you.
We just saw his team boss, Craig Scatella, in the background just snap a quick photo on the iPhone. There's a look at a very busy pit area. We've got so much to get through this afternoon. Wonderful to have your company. We'll be back on the other side of this. Plenty more racing coming up at Winton Motor Raceway. Welcome back to round number one of the High Tech Oil Super Series here at Winton Motor Raceway. We've got the rumble of the TO2 muscle cars coming your way. Wade, this race is going to be super exciting. Into the fourth and final race of round one of the TA2 muscle car series, framed by High Tech, and we'll see Wodonga's Wizkid Jackson Wright on the pole. Lee Stibbs will start alongside him in the Arrow Financial Services MBA Camaro. Nicholas Bates will line up at a position number three. Four will be Dylan Thomas from five will be the Canberra Whiskey Josh Haynes. Alongside fellow 18-year-old Hayden Hume. Wow, it's exciting. It's fourth row. Michael Coulter and Zach Lachalpo will share the fourth row. Aaron Tebb and Graham Cheney will be back on the fifth row. Brett Gardner made it all the way to position 11. How is that? 16 spots in that last Watch race. him in this one too. Hayden Jackson right behind him. Here's a look back at what happened with Paul Hadley in the IES Motorsport Camaro. Keep your eye on the centre of the pack. It's a blue and chrome car. There's contact with he and Pappas just there. Boom! That just turns him hard right. He goes across the roadway. And he gets over the ripple strip. I think it might have been that return road there that rolled him over. He got sideways. Now watch it here in the background. Sideways, yeah. See how he hit that road? And that is what's launched the IES car. Pappas got a flat right front and some right front corner damage. Oh, we haven't seen this. This is on board with Hadley. Oh, my giddy aunt. Watch this. Round he goes here and then... Oh, wow. That's the first chance we've had a look at that situation from an in-car perspective for the likeable IES Motorsport team principal. And the good news was he climbed out of the car A-OK. -okay. Stibbs, the expat pom and the Arrow Financial Services MBA entry alongside Wodongas. Jackson Rice in the Pettis suspension. Dream Racing Australia entry. Go back to the very clean number 24. Mustang of Nicholas Bates and Dylan Thomas. Boy, those boys have been at it all day. Or weekend, even. So here we go, waiting for those red lights to go out. And we are green. Final race of the day, final race of the round. Boy, it's a great drone shot as we get out into turn one. This looks better for Rice, no stibs. Oh, he ran wide there. Jackson will have a look at him up the inside. Under brakes, Pappas in trouble. Coming back, it's Dibs as they work their way down into turn two. Haynes coming after Bates, Thomas and Hume. And it's been an interesting opening lap already. Oh, someone off the racetrack. Is that Cheney, perhaps? I think it is. So the blue and chrome entry, the IES number 51. Boy, it's been a tough day for the IES team, Matt. Hopefully he can rejoin that. Of course, Pappas went off very early there. Josh Haynes, though, with the advantage coming at turn number three. He got the move done on Dylan Thomas and the CXC Mustang, and now he is up into fourth position. So Nick Bates is going to have to watch out for the young gun who's moved his way up after having an unfortunate start in race number one with some temperature issues in the car. They've come back today and worked their uh -oh. way through the field, but this is, is ominous. It, is that the Shalpo, possibly? It's a Camaro from the back and it's white, but I'm not sure if Zach Lachalpo possibly. We'll have a look. There is Teb. Gartner is one to watch here for sure. Brad Gartner, see Robinson and Lindstrom. So lap one of 12. Lee Stibbs, your leader from Jackson Rice. Nicholas Bates, Josh Haynes, Dylan Thomas, Hayden Hume, Michael Coulter, Aaron Teb. Brad Gardner and Hayden Jackson. Now Iron uh, Gardner gets by Teb. I haven't seen Lachalpo, Matty. It leads me to think that it was his car that had slowed. 
I can't believe how quick they've hooked that car up. It's like they have got it off track, so we won't see any yellows down that section of the racetrack. Hopefully, as we keep this battle underway, and look at Josh Haynes all over the back of Nick Bates and searching for that final spot on the podium for that third position. Hopefully, he can make We're very early on the race, though, and see if Haynes can maybe get past and try and challenge Jackson Rice there as he takes a dive on the inside through Bates and they take the right hand around a turn number nine and wow. Haynes looks like he might have got that done will Bates be able to come back at him as they head into turn number ten is he going to hold on to Bates down the inside not enough there to get up on the inside pillar and Haynes gives him a little bit yeah, of racing he did. room there yeah I'm glad you pointed that out he did he didn't turn across him Hume Hayden Hume is coming after Dylan Thomas as well. I, I'm really glad you pointed it out because I thought Haynes didn't shut the door. He's like, if you're good enough to be close enough there. Now look at the dodge. Hayden Hume right behind Dylan Thomas. This will be making mum and dad pretty excited. What a drive this is. Looking to make the move up the inside on Thomas. Stibbs is just right on the edge, isn't he, the whole time. Good little battle going on there. Then you go back to Coulter. Brad Gardner. So Gardner's up to position eight. Look at Hayden. Total parts plus dodge all over the back of Dylan Thomas. Three car battle. A pair of Masters class drivers, a couple of pros in that battle. As we see Stibbs. Pressure now coming from Jackson Rice. Now Jackson said, and we heard him, we're playing the long game. We want the championship. Lee Stibbs said, I'm praying to the God of mechanical failure you don't win. What a week coming in for him as well. I mean, we're not quite sure about the incident that happened there, but came into the week with a knee brace on it. Oh, it's so Thomas! Good. Sorry, Matt, he just ran very wide. He got on the anchors, and I think we might see Hume get through. So something definitely happened there. I don't know whether Thomas just brake-checked himself a little there or something. Gardner up behind Coulter now. He was in the kitchen, mate. Jackson Rice told me something happened in the kitchen. I don't know what he was doing. He's turned the wrong way. He's twisted his ankle and his knee in the kitchen. We can talk about being a Oh, train. no. Stibbs has spun around oh, here. Oh, no. Oh, that is devastating for Stibbsy. We don't know what happened. Did you catch all of it? I didn't. No, it was just the, the sight there as they come out. I think they might have come together because look at Haynes all over the back of Jackson Rice as they ignite this battle for first position. There was quite a gap there to Haynes to close that down. We'll have a look at the high-tech oils replay now. Oh, wow. We'll wait and see if we see something come up on our screens about any sort of penalties there. Hopefully it's not for Jackson Rice. He's been coming off a couple of wins here. There is Hayden Jackson in the 81 car. Stibbs is riding behind him. You've got Aaron Tebb in there as well. It's a bit of a result for Matt McKellen. He's up to position number 11. Maybe Whitey Helen gave him a motivational phone call and said, come on, Matt, fire up. Hume again right behind Bates. It's exciting, Matt, when you look at the number of youngsters in this top 10 even. Rice, Haynes, Hume, Gartner. I'll tell you what, Jackson, there's a lot of youngsters. Big step in their motorsports career when they come into the TA2 muscle car racing as well. These cars, they're big, they move around on the track. A lot of work for Dylan Thomas, so he's fought back over here at oh. Hume and gives him a little bit of a nudge. Is that a bit of payback from earlier? We're not quite sure. Oh, oh wow! That, now, that, that's a bit more than a nudge wave. Now, what is going on here? Oh, safety car. Now, this is going to be an intriguing situation to find out more about because Matty Cav was a Dylan Thomas. Liberace payback. So let's have well, a look at the high tech oil ready with Hume's car. Super Series replay. No. So let's have a look at the high tech oils. Super Series replay. There was a lock up there, wasn't there? There was front there for Hume. There was a bit of a. Now, is that there that there's a problem with the car right there? There was once or twice there, and then he did try to go around the outside. Yeah. Right yeah. from Dylan Thomas. Quite go wide enough, and now he's had to go through a few more to make his oh, way back to the wow. pack. Let's check out some of the high tech oils highlights. It was Formosa getting into the side of Lindstrom just then. There was Pappas going off in the eight car. The other one you got to think about with that as well, Matt, is the tire conservation issue. Is Gardner because when you think about it, Gardner had his whole first race taken out. Well, there's where Cheney went off the road. I'd like to see that again somehow. 
to see what actually triggered that. But Gardner, he basically missed a whole race worth of wearing out the tyres when he was stuck underneath, ironically, the tyre bundle. And there we go, green lights, and we are racing once again. Jackson Rice will lead us away. Josh Haynes and Nick Bates, our top three. Gardner is up to position five now. The bespectacled hard charger from Panola in South Australia. He's got Coulter in behind him. Hayden Jackson is in there as well. Gardner right up behind Thomas. It is on here. Gardner, Coulter, Jackson. Aaron Tab has been lively as well in the wall tech, number 93. Good shot. There's the battle on screen. Thomas, Gardner, Coulter, Jackson, Teb, McKeldon's up to position nine. And Lee Stibbs, after leading early, back in position 10 after that spin. He will be filthy. Now, there is Cheney trying to make a drive around the outside of Hollinger. So Graham Cheney will be pretty fired up. We didn't see, did he go on his own, Matty, or did someone help him? in that incident towards turn five. We didn't really see that in the replay. I've been having a look at Jackson, though. He's been moving around from the back of Coulter, but we'll have a look there. We'll change the over here and look through. Now, Coulter going through, and Jackson's been very, very loose behind him in that seventh position, trying to get some traction over rear tyres. Pappas has worked his way back now. You can see him down at the moment. Pappas in 19th position oh, after coming Coulter. off in that turn number one. And Coulter now throwing the rear of the car <laughs> out. The Camaro, look at it go. He's really had a blast driving that Camaro. There's no doubt about that. Great speed shot right there. Lap 9 of 12. Jackson Rice, the only man in the 125 mark. He did that on lap number 5. Spread out just a little bit. There's been some really impressive rookies and newcomers. Stibbs trying to get by the Kubota entry of McKeldon. Gets him. Stibbs squeezes through. With the Camaro just ahead of the Mustang. You got Lang in there as well. Uh oh. Robinson in the number 10 car. Robbo had a much better round last year here where he played a bit of a game with slick tyres and wets and things like that. And it was a bit of a masterclass. It's not been that way this year so far in the first round of the series. So Gartner trying to get by Thomas. Stibbs. So where's he back to now? Position nine, he got by McKeldon. So he's up to position nine. When you look at his points coming into that, that'll be the interesting part about that as well. Lap nine, about to be lap 10 of 12. Yes, still on his second points there for the round so far. If he can hold on to that position, I think McKeldon was very respectful on that turn oh. number three, let him in, but have a look at this. It's still underway for Mc in the back there between Coulter and Jackson, fighting it out for sixth position. Oh, look at this, quickest time is now Haynes. One minute, 25.5521. And Josh Haynes turning up the heat. Gardner really giving Thomas plenty to think about. He goes up the inside on Thomas. Can he hold it? Will he go in? Gee, Dillon off the racetrack and dropped a couple of spots. Hayden Jackson got him. Here comes Haynes. Just wait till we get our Haynes on you. Here comes Josh Haynes on Jackson Rice. Oh, it's going to be a ripper season. How much young talent, Matty Cab, have we got on display here today? We're expecting to see this in the first couple of races throughout this Race meeting, and look, he dives down the inside. He's not going to get it done, though, and Haynes will have to just let Rice settle back into the groove as they go down the back to turn number 10, and we're having a look, a bit of a 10-second penalty there for Jenny as well. So we'll look into that a little bit later. Yeah, not sure what that means at all, Graham Cheney. We're almost into the last two laps right now. Haynes has really stepped up the pressure on Jackson Rice. This is a really good battle. They've gotten away from Bates in third. Dylan Thomas, not sure if it's tyre wear or something, but certainly he ran wide. Gartner got him. So here we go. That is Mike Vitto right there, the MVA principal and the owner of the team that Lee Stibbs and Brad Gartner drive for. His boy is a heck of a racer in Porsches and also very handy in sprint cars as well. Cheney, a 10-second penalty for a safety car restart infringement. 
Saint Brad might have been a bit fired up. Look at Haynes. Jackson Rice having to be a bit defensive here. Boy, it's been a good race. We work our way to the cleavage. Rice has been stout, looking to wrap up the round regardless. He doesn't want to get caught up here, Matt, that's for sure. You definitely don't want to make a mistake and any contact made good for him. So go and turn around as Haynes takes another dive coming out of turn number eight. Ooh, it's on here. I've seen Josh do this with Jet Johnson. They went after it very similarly. The Pettis suspension number seven for Dream Racing up alongside Josh Haynes, the kid from the ACT. Got more pit crew on that team than McLaren Formula One. Here he comes up the inside. Rice went wide. Haynes was clever there. Last lap and we're sideways, Matty Cav. He slid that Mustang out, didn't he, Josh Haynes? And the fight here is can he get Jackson Rice on this final lap? The final race here at the High Tech Oil Super Series for this Sunday. Oh, no! There was contact just then. I think Haynes redressed. He definitely, I think, pulled out. He can see some damage. Missing a tooth on the normally cheeky grin of the 37. I get the feeling he laid back off the throttle not to go through. Oh, it is on. Jackson Rice needs to be really careful here, Matt. The round wind could go begging here. Oh, man, it's on like Donkey Kong. Final race of the weekend for the TA2 Muscle Car Series. Jackson Rice up against Josh Haynes. And we're going at it all the way to the end. You think Haynes wants this win? Oh, <laughs> Jackson's like, no. I want to go home and put an exclamation point on this. Last two corners. It has been a ripping race. Rice refusing to give in. Haynes on the outside. We're going to go all the way to the very end. The seven car of Rice. Look at Haynes. Look at to go back on the inside. Did he get him? I think he might. They're going to go side by side. Oh, Haynes. I think he's going to pull this off. What a finish. Haynes will get the win. My giddy aunt. What a race that was. Matty Kavanagh. All the way down to the final metres of the race. That final corner where Haynes with the crisscross gets on the inside. Oh, no, he spun out on the final corner oh, as Teb. well. That's Aaron Teb, who was under attack there from Stibbs a bit earlier in the race. I don't know if something's happened there. But look at Brad Gartner, third position. What a move from him to get back into this and get some points to start off the series. Let's take a look at the results. I know that Matty Cab is going to be heading down to do some presentation interviews as well. God, that was good. That was a bare knuckle pub brawl. Josh Haynes, your winner by 0.19 of a second. Brad Gardner gets third. Michael Coulter gets fourth. Hayden Jackson, good job on debut. Top five. Dylan Thomas, six. Nicholas Bates, seventh. Lee Stibbs drove back to eight. Matt McKeldin inside the top ten. Nick Lang, good top ten for him. He finishes tenth. We go back to Hugh McAllister in 11th. John Hollinger in 12th, one of his best rounds. Chris Papath got back to 13th. Adam Hargraves, 14th. Chris Vermosa, 15th. Greg Keane, good to see the guy from Canada. Got it across the line. Mick Rowell, Bernie Walsh, Rob Leonard. Graham Cheney with a big penalty for a restart safety car infringement. Fantastic weekend to start off in the first three races, but race four got turned around. What happened there? Uh, yeah, I was unfortunately heading down into the second to last corner. Um, as I turned in, I, I got spun. Um, I tried to keep the, the, the foot in and spin me back around, but you know, it put me on the grass and, and uh, you're like a Bambi on ice trying to get off the grass and, and, and onto the bitumen again. But uh, we'll let, we'll let you know, the powers to be decide exactly what happened. That's not, that's not my decision. My decision is to just get in the thing and drive it as fast and as hard as I can. Um, we obviously race in this category. Everyone speaks down the pit lane to, to try and be firm and fair, but give racing room. And um, I'll assume this one was a mistake. Obviously, lightning generally doesn't strike twice. Uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, I've come off second best in that one. Josh Haynes, what a weekend. You've had some big challenges. Race number one with some engine issues, but you fought your way back. And finally, that number one. 
Yeah, it's been a very, very hot weekend, so we've all been struggling out there with uh, the car and temperatures. Obviously, the first race, we got a bit unlucky and the car got a bit hot. Uh, we made the decision to retire it. Um, but to think, you know, race two was starting 25th and now we've come in as the number one car. So pretty, pretty excited. Uh, the team has done an unreal job. It's so special to have such a, like a great pe group of people around me. Um, the category's done an awesome job. Jax and I had a really close battle there and, uh, yeah, luckily I came away with the win. So I'd just like to thank Beaches Sea-Doo, Herzog Steel, Chapman Floor Coverings, SOS Recruitment, Car Bids uh, and Elvin Group for sticking by me. It's been an awesome weekend. Let's have a look at the points after round number one with Lee Stibbs coming away in first position after a post-race penalty to Jackson Rice that puts him back into second. Then it's Dylan Thomas in third, Nicholas Bates in fourth and Michael Bates rounds out your top five. It was an exciting weekend of racing here at Winton Motor Raceway. Very tight in the points already and we've seen some of our young guns not start off the way they wanted to. It's going to head north next though up to Darwin Northern Territory where they continue the fight for the championship across this six round series. Of course, Hidden Valley Raceway, Darwin Northern Territory, April 29 to the 1st of May. It's going to be a long weekend up there. Hope you can come party with us. On behalf of the commentary team, thanks for watching. We'll see you at round number two.